Hello, this is Jacob Avila, 5 Minutes Sono, and today I'm going to show you how to diagnose a DVT with your ultrasound. So your probe of choice is still going to mostly be the linear probe, but if you have a patient that's a little more fluffy, you might want to use a curvilinear probe as well, but the linear probe is going to give you your best images. So here's a cartoon representation of the zones we're going to be looking at. Now you want to start up here when it's the common femoral, right here's the greater saphenous, which is a superficial vein. You want to track that down, right about here you're going to see a branch point of the profunda femoris, or the deep femoral vein, and you want to keep following that down, get the deep femoral vein as much as you can, but it gets kind of difficult to see that as it moves down into the leg, but you want to keep down and keep looking through the, well, let's not call it superficial femoral vein, let's just call it the femoral vein, because that's actually what we call it now. So keep going down and follow the femoral vein a few inches down until at least the mid thigh. What I honestly do often is I'll follow the femoral vein all the way down until it gets into the adductor canal, which is down almost by the knee. So this is what the ultrasound image looks like. Over here we have the common femoral, right there we have the greater saphenous shooting off of it, and over here is the femoral artery. We're going to follow that down, keep following the common femoral vein here, and then right there we see the deep femoral branch off from the common femoral. Then after that, what's left of the common femoral is actually going to be the femoral vein, and we just keep following that down all the way down, down, down. Over here is the femoral artery still. Keep following down until it dips into the adductor canal about right there. So you want to see what that actually looks like when you're doing it on an individual. So right here you have the common femoral vein, and you'll see I'll track it down, and I'm compressing at one centimeter increment. So every centimeter you lift and then get down, and then make sure that those walls are touching. This is compression ultrasonography, and if you're able to compress the walls of that vein, you see that right there? I'm able to compress the walls of that vein. That means there's nothing in the lumen that is blocking those vessel walls from touching. If you can get those two vessel walls, the anterior and posterior walls of the vein to touch, then there is nothing in that lumen that is obstructing those walls from touching, meaning no clot in that area. This poor individual was a cancer patient that came in with shortness of breath and chest pain. I looked in the groin and I looked in the other groin and the patient actually unfortunately had bilateral DVTs. Now if you're pushing hard enough that you can compress the artery but the vein's not collapsing, there's something in that lumen of the vein, very likely a clot. Now one thing you have to be careful for is this structure up here. If you're not careful, you might think this is an actual DVT, but you notice as I move around, those circles actually disappear, which would make it, the likelihood of it being a vessel pretty low. And the vessels we actually care about are actually all the way down here, right? So these are actually enlarged lymph nodes that can cause symptoms that might be concerning for a DVT. You know, you have pain and swelling in an area in the groin. So now let's move on to the popliteal area. As far as the technique, it's kind of similar in the sense that you try to find that vein and see if it's compressible or not. If you can have the patient move prone, it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to do your examination. It's the same thing. You find that vein, you compress, you move a centimeter down, and you try to compress again. If you can't get them to lay prone, you can always frog leg their leg out. So basically it's bring the knee out laterally, and you can do the same technique there. So this is the anatomy here. We have the popliteal vein and the artery here. The vein pops on top in the popliteal area. So it's always gonna be more superficial relative to the artery. And then right there you can see it branches off into the calf veins and arteries. And here's the technique here. So what you do is you can actually have the patient bring up their leg right there. It makes it a little easier to bring the probe down there. There we go. So here is the popliteal vein, and you can see that I'm just finding it, and then at one centimeter increments, I am compressing that to make sure that there's no clot in that popliteal vein right there. And right there, you can see it actually starts splitting into the calf veins, and I'm following those down basically as far as I can follow them. The calf veins are actually pretty difficult to evaluate. You still can, and I would go down basically as deep as you can and make sure there's no clot in any of the veins down there in the calf. This is what a popliteal clot looks like. We have the artery here, which is deeper. And then up here, we have the vein. You can see that there's an echogenic structure within it, and it's non-compressible. So to recap, there are two regions that you need to look for. You need to look in the popliteal region and in the femoral region. In the femoral region, it's very important to go down at least to about mid-thigh when you're in the femoral vein area, because if you don't include the femoral vein in your evaluation, you might miss a clinically significant 
amount of DVTs and potentially harm your patients. So don't forget to compress. Make sure that about every centimeter or so that vein is completely compressible and be careful of those false positives. That's it for this week's 5-Minute Sono. Please feel free to email me or send me a tweet if you have any questions. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe. Put in your name and your email address in the little text boxes and never miss another video. And if you want these streamed directly to your smartphones or tablets, go ahead and go to iTunes or whatever podcasting service you use. Type in 5-Minute Sono, subscribe, and leave me a rating or a review.